Live from Boston, Massachusetts, it's The Cube, covering Red Hat Summit 2017, brought to you by Red Hat. Welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of the Red Hat Summit here in Boston, Massachusetts. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host, Stu Miniman. We are joined by Jay Jamison. He is the Vice President for Strategy, Software Defined, and Cloud Division at HPE. Thanks so much for joining us, Jay. Oh, thanks for having me. So, I was just in your keynote session, and you talked about making hybrid IT simpler. You talked about the imperative that you heard from customers to bring solutions, not silos. Can you tell our viewers a little bit about the, the specific feedback you were hearing from customers that, that really made you want to, to, to tighten your focus? Here? Yeah, I think that, so first off, thanks for having me, and I would say that absolutely, um, customers have been very, very clear at the excitement and the opportunity that they see ahead of them in terms of digital transformation and moving to cloud and taking advantage of all these new capabilities and technologies that seem to be showing up all the time. Whether it's containers, whether it's Kubernetes, whether it's Internet of Things, all that stuff's super exciting. But at the same time, customers are saying, you know, look, I've got thousands of applications in a traditional estate or a virtualized estate that aren't going to be moving to anything like a cloud anytime soon. And what I need is a, a way to start thinking about how do I manage that whole estate so that I can get my existing footprint optimized, I can get keep that uh, running smoothly, make sure it's secure, make sure it's reliable, make sure it's low cost. All those capabilities, while you know, I want to continue to sort of redu you know, reduce budget where possible there, and I want to start spinning up more of my new efforts and more of my new investment onto these new things so that I can be more responsive to the business that I'm trying to run. I can get new products and services out to my customers. I can engage partners and uh, my existing customer base in ways that they want to be engaged. I can enter new businesses. And so that challenge of how do I manage that hybrid estate, whether it's a mix of on-prem or off-prem, whether it's a mix of traditional and virtualized uh, applications and workloads with sort of new cloud native or containerized or even serverless now, those kinds of things. That, that is really what I see uh, as the problem of hybrid, hybrid IT today. And our customers tell us that, geez, it's complicated and getting more so each and every day. And that presents a tremendous opportunity for HPE and partners like Red Hat to be able to come forward and say, look, we can start helping you with solutions that start bringing together a comprehensive approach to trying to solve for making that entire estate simpler, make it more solution oriented, and less a set of different silos and people that are all kind of sort of stuck in whatever technology stack they might be running with. Yeah. Jay, a very interesting point. Uh, one, one of the messages we heard from Red Hat is for th that uh, application spectrum you talked about. I've got, you know, most enterprises, hundreds if not thousands of yep. applications. They have the new ones that they're modernizing and building, but but even the old ones, we need to at least replatform them. Uh, the term some are, you know, we used to call it lift and shift. Um, you know, replatform seems to be the cool new way to kind of <laughs> yeah. uh, talk about it. But you know, really modernizing the platform that I'm on, uh, being more software driven. Uh, you know, being ready to take uh, that if I'm breaking it down and componentizing, containerizing it. You know, starting to build microservices. But uh, how are you working with Red Hat? Uh, you know, how how does HPE, uh, you know, cloud offerings and infrastructure pieces playing in that? Uh, you know, replatforming and then moving up the spectrum. Yeah, so I think really uh, across the board, I think I think there are a couple pieces. I think first of all, you're absolutely right. The customers will say, "Look, I have an existing estate of applications and workloads that I absolutely have to have to use." So, for example, I often think about if you you think about sort of a mobile application that you might use a lot from a mainstream customer. Like think of your, like getting your flight reservation on your mobile phone. Like of course there are parts of that mobile application that are going to be very modern. Like I can order an Uber from the mobile app that I use on my airline often. But, you know, and that's of course very modern. I'm using APIs, I'm using all this kind of nice stuff to plug in sort of what Uber offers that airline vendor to be able to say you can have that transaction flow through a partner flow. But things like, what time the flight's taking off, whether it's delayed, like those are old, those are existing systems that aren't sort of new newfangled, if you will. And so what customers are telling me is, look, I've got a corpus of data, a corpus of application logic that I absolutely need to be able to access and use and deliver in new ways. <laughs> and so in many senses, I think that resonates very strongly, this notion of, hey, replatforming's going on, and it's a reality of, again, how do I make this mix of 
data application tools that may exist and, and the desires I have to do new stuff, how do I bring it together in a way that lands effectively for a customer so that I have a delightful experience? Mm -hmm. And what we're doing with Red Hat, I think is, is really exciting in terms of providing um, uh, opportunities for and manners where together we're sort of taking the best of both worlds. So a great example that I talked about in my keynote is saying, look, we're trying to take, um, we're working very closely with, with Red Hat and specifically their Ansible team to say, look, what, what customer, what users of Ansible love is building playbooks that enable them to automate infrastructure using Ansible playbooks. That's sort of what it's all about. And what we're what, what Ansible has been great with those playbooks is setting up and running and virtual and, and automating virtual machines. Well, what we're doing with, <clears throat> because HP tends to have infrastructure and great infrastructure management tools that say, look, down at the hardware level, we want to make it easier and more fungible for uh, IT shops to be able to manage that physical infrastructure. And so what we've done is we've partnered up with Ansible to say, look, we want your users of Ansible to just have their playbooks and, it, and we will connect our OneView APIs, which is our infrastructure management software that sits on top of hardware, to say it connects. And so when your users build an Ansible playbook that wants to change how the infrastructure works, we'll take care of it all in one view. It's not something your users have to change or learn anything new, it's just all of a sudden Ansible gets more powerful because it's connecting to HP hardware and, and, and providing a richer and more flexible infrastructure experience. And so that's some of the stuff that we're doing now to sort of make our hardware more flexible and more modern in, in the context of an Ansible developer or Ansible user, but over time that's going to get even better. So the stuff, that, the things that we're doing with Synergy, which is our new, uh, brand that is focused on building hardware infrastructure that has composability, which basically says, look, we'll, it looks like a hardware device, but from a from an operator's point of view, it's very fungible. You can re you can fun you can refactor and make your blend of compute or storage or networking kind of shift on the fly. So a very cloud-like experience with on-premises infrastructure. And what we're doing is we want to work with um, great technologies that are very cloud-centric, such as OpenShift from Red Hat, to say, look, we want to be able to enable customers to, using API, spin up bare metal instances of OpenShift. Very powerful in terms of time to value message for a cloud-native customer that says, look, I need to run cloud-native applications, I want to have containers, but I want to do it on-premise. This solution will be something that we think is a really powerful message for particularly our Red Hat OpenShift style customer looking to build applications. Yeah, Jay, and I'm familiar with the Synergy uh, platform and composable infrastructure, uh, like the ideas, right, you can break that down yep. into smaller components. Uh, you know, what we hear all the time is, right, I need to build distributed architectures and as they talked in the keynote, predicting and forecasting where that's going to go is tough. So, the, you know, big challenge customers always have is like, I buy these boxes and three years into it, oh, I'm only using 40% of it. You know, the utilization yep. inside data centers is horrible. Even yep. with server virtualization, it helped a little bit, but not as much as what you see service providers and clouds and the like. So, you know, where are we with the rollout with Synergy? Do, do you have any proof points of customers that are saying, oh, I'm getting better u utilization, you know, my OpEx is much better, and you know, I'm... I'm yeah, what I'm, I would say is, so first of all, if I would strongly agree with you in the sense that if you talk to most uh, mainstream enterprise customers today about their data center utilization rates, it's often very poor. And I think one of the big draws that customers have when they look at public cloud opportunities is they'll say, well the nice thing about a public cloud is I feel as though I'm getting much higher utilization rates because of the way the payment structures work and so on. Now that may not always be true. You'll have some, at times people say, well these things are sitting dormant. But that, that's, the, that's the instinct. We had server right. sprawl, we had VM sprawl, right. and now, now we have cloud public sprawl. cloud sprawl, exactly right. server will still fix it all too, right? right? Exactly, so, you exactly know. right. <laughs> but you absolutely have the challenge of underutilized data centers and so it's imperative for HP and I think really the industry to say, look, the solutions that we're putting forward, whenever we talk about hybrid cloud solutions or hybrid IT solutions or private cloud solutions, whatever it is, to me, it comes down to, look, am I able to show you in concrete terms how, how am I increasing the utilization of your data center and how am I helping you, you lower your costs? And Synergy will, over time, become a great solution and platform in that, in that manner. Because, for a couple of reasons. One, you've described the, the fungibility and the composability of, of, of resources makes that something that is um, very much simpler from a, from a 
technology standpoint. But then at the same time, when you couple it with pay-as-you-go style business models that HPE makes available to its customers through our financial services, you start to then say, look, you're not just sort of writing us a big check in CapEx and waiting three years and then being disappointed. What you're doing is you're going to start getting the notion of, that says, look, this is going to show up, you'll have a small amount of pod you're paying as you use, and we're able to then sort of work together to forecast when, does capa when will capacity requirements get to a place where you absolutely need to uh, add more add more capability and, and refresh that refresh that that hardware or extend that hardware excuse me on the customer adoption um, you know it's a, it's a new platform and it's it's just coming out and we're getting great early adoption I think particularly from users that were in the beta we had very satisfied beta users and we're starting to see I think really strong early adoption of of the product we actually had someone at our most recent discover um, talk with I was talking with them later and they were um, I think it was Hudson uh, Alpha, which is a biotech researching style institute that often tries many of our things. And what they were saying that I thought was a really interesting point, which I'd not heard of in the context of, hey, what does composability do and how does this drive up utilization rates, many of these things. One of the things that he was saying that I thought was really interesting is he was starting to use Synergy to deliver what he called spot instance style on-premise infrastructure, where someone could run a workload for a period of time and then if someone else needed the infrastructure more badly and he had a way to sort of basically just blast away the old thing and put in the new thing there. And he said, this is great because during the day, there's a certain set of workloads we have to do. At night, there are a different set of workloads I want to do. And Synergy gives me the capability to be able to do all that very simply. And so I think that those kinds of capabilities, while still early, will be very powerful value propositions for customers that are looking to solve the problem you're describing of. How do I get out of a data center that's under 20% utilized? I need to get more efficiency here in order to lower the cost and be responsive to what my customers need. Jay, before you were at HPE, you worked yep. as a venture capitalist at Blue Run Ventures, uh, in particular looking at opportunities in mobile and uh, consumer internet and enter enterprise software. Yep. If you could put on your investor hat here and talk a little bit about the cloud market and yep. the cloud industry, what, what excites you and what gives you pause in terms of where you see the market heading and, and where companies and are, are putting their money? Oh, that's a really good question. I think that, um, well, I would say that putting an investor hat on, I think that uh, particularly in the enterprise space, I think it's a really exciting time, particularly for, um, and not to be super self-serving for what HPE is doing, but I think there's a set of problems that are out there that are big and broad where there will be large companies that, that get created. One area that we're very interested in at HPE that I think is an area of, an, of sort of investor interest, whether it's HPE making the investment or whether it's venture capitalists or whatever, what you what, what have you, is really in the notion that I describe of as hybrid management. And what that basically means is, look, I'm a, cus I'm a user that's going to have some VMware, I'm going to have some uh, cloud stuff running on AWS, I'm going to have a desire to use Kubernetes and containers and so on. Help me get one pane of glass that gives me a way to think about seeing those different applications, understanding how they're running. I want one way to do things like firmware updates for the stuff that needs firmware updates. I want one way to do application firewalls. I want one way to do this. And I think that's going to be a very interesting um, and sticky uh, market to, be, to, to go off and, and win. So if I were um, in the investment space, that would be an area that I would be looking at, at very deeply. Um, another area that I think is is going to be really uh, interesting and important, we talk a lot about sort of AI and machine learning in mm. the context of kind of, um, you know, everything in the world of enterprise sort of seems to have this label of, hey, we're using AI and machine learning, but I think what you really have to get back to is what about artificial intelligence and machine learning is actually going to help you solve a problem? How is it going to make your business actually better? And I think that often we're, I think right now at a place where we're a little bit too uh, over our skis in terms of saying, look, these are really interesting technologies. AI is going to do everything and drive our cars and basically make us little house pets in the corners because they're doing so much in our lives. But I think that there tends to be, one customer was saying to me, you know, what's really interesting is dozens of startups will come and tell me about how AI is going to solve 100 problems I didn't know I have. What I'd really like someone to come and talk to me about is 
about, I want them to talk to me about one of the problems I know I have, because I've got 100 problems I know I've got that I want solutions to, and so I think a big opportunity is really to try and figure out how do these new technologies, particularly in that space around big data and so on, how do those become things that are really truly impactful to making a mainstream business that may have a hybrid estate, how does it make them more effective? And that can have impact in terms of how to make their IT ops more efficient, how to predict outages, how to be more secure, all that sort of stuff, all the way to how do I do a better job delighting my customers and predicting where the next new markets are going to be. So those are some of the areas that I'd be the most interested in sort of as an investor and, and really as an operator and a strategist at HPE. And yet you're, you remain a little skeptical of what you're hearing about the AI and machine learning in terms of where, pe where it really truly is at right now and the opportunities that. Well, yeah, what I would say is I think it's it's, um, if it's, techno the technology is really exciting yeah. and, and developing very, very quickly. That's, that is, that I have no, no question about. What I often have questions about, and I hear customers questioning is, is this a, a, a technology in search of a solution, or is it just kind of, we're saying, hey, this is a really cool new thing that it can, that it can, it can go solve everything, and I, but I haven't thought specifically about how to actually solve the specific problem that exists at hand, exactly. and that's the, the challenge. It's ultimately, I think of it, to, to dig in a little deeper, it's really a product management question of, or problem of, hey, do I really understand what, my, what problem my customer's trying to solve, and am I using this tactic to, to, to do a great job? So, as a quick example, machine learning, or artificial, that, those kinds of things are, are great for what computers do well. What's, uh, one thing a computer does really well is the same repetitive task thousands and thousands of times. So things like email, marketing automation, or thinking about how you use a business development manager to reach, do outbound selling. Like that, you can have a computer do a lot that imitates a human being to say, hey, I'm going to send you an email and try and sell you something and get you interested on a call. I don't need to have a human being do a lot of that stuff. That, to me, is really straight down the fairway, very clear business problem that uh, AI and machine learning can do a great job, bots, all that sort of stuff can do a great job starting to have an impact on. But to think it's just going to do everything out of the box is something that you have to think about, okay, where does this tool and technology really provide the value that customers are going to see? Jay, uh, you know, we've had HPE on theCUBE lots of times. Sure. We were at Discover in London, so we, you know, I think we're pretty close to where your cloud strategy is, but you know, I look out next week's OpenStack Summit, uh, some people in the industry is like, oh, HPE pulled out completely of uh, OpenStack, you've got uh, HP Discover uh, coming right, to Vegas. Right, right. Uh, you know, soon after that, and we'll have theCUBE there also. Right. I know John and Dave are really looking forward to it. <laughs> okay, give our audience a little bit of an update as to you know, where HPE is and isn't when it comes yeah, to, when it like comes to OpenStack, uh, specifically, and just kind of you know, the cloud positioning in general. Yeah, right, you know. so uh, what I would say is I think that, it's a really good question because I think there's been a lot of transition, I think customers are still, and, and the market is still trying to figure out, okay, what, what and where does, is HP playing? And I think that um, what I was talking about today in the keynote and what I think sort of represents sort of where we're going and what we are doing is we're really focused in on this notion of saying, look, we want to build a set of solutions that make a customer's hybrid estate uh, simpler. And that hybrid estate, as I describe it, cuts across proprietary virtualization technologies like, virtu like VMware or like Hyper-V with Microsoft, it cuts, it's going to cut across OpenStack, it's going to cut across uh, Docker, it's going to cut across public clouds, et cetera. And I would say that where HP is most focused, sort of it, when we look at how do we help customers get uh, better leverage and value across that whole mix of estate, what we would talk about is we think we're moving a little bit more up stack into this sort of notion of saying we want to invest and be really great at managing across that estate. So when I was talking about areas that I'd be interested in as inv a venture investor, it, you know, it wouldn't surprise you that at HP we're really, we talk a little bit about this concept of new stack and it really is this notion of saying we want to be great at managing uh, uh, a hybrid estate across public and private, across proprietary and open source. So what that generally means, what that means then as it pertains to, okay, what are we doing with OpenStack? What are we doing with respect to Cloud Foundry or in the case of Red Hat OpenShift? It means we're a lot more partner centric because our assertion is that we believe the customers will have a mix of, it's not going to be all, an all OpenStack world within a data center. We think it's going to be a mix of, OpenStack's going to be part of the estate. We also think Docker is going to be part of the estate. We think VMware is going to be part of the estate. And we think that's, 
the and that's where things are going. And so what you've seen us do in terms of the the uh, work we're doing with whether it's Red Hat at, at some levels, whether it's SUSE, whether it's even VMware, whether it's Microsoft, whether it's Docker, we've done work in partnership with all of them. And I think you'll see that partner-centric approach continue. We certainly are interested in helping support customers that are existing and will move forward with respect to OpenStack and with Cloud Foundry in terms of what we're doing there. But I think that uh, increasingly over time, there's going to be a, a deep reliance on partners as we look at those infrastructure as a service and PaaS, as a PaaS layers, because we look at that and say, there's a tremendous amount of world-class talent that's off building out those distributions in the OpenStack communities and, the, and, and, and other big open source communities in those areas where we can most likely partner and have those um, take advantage of things like our infrastructure management layer of one view, can, take, can be uh, very well leveraged within our new stack, uh, product and project that we're working on and so on. So that's really where we're heading and how we're, how we're approaching it. Jay, Jameson, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it's been great. It's been a pleasure, thank you so much. I'm Rebecca Knight for Stu Miniman. We will return with more of theCUBE after this.